Lloyd decided to write a trilogy titled The Sons of Lear, which would be a retelling of Welsh mythology. And thus the mythical land of Prydain was created. He sent me this first chapter and it was awful. It was filled with dragons flying around and it was just totally so far out. And I said, Lloyd, come on, make it something kids would want to read. Grab them and he'd start. First sentence should be something like, Taran wanted to make a sword, which of course is what the book ended up having as the first sentence. In 1964, the first book in the trilogy, now called The Chronicles of Bretain, was published under the title of The Book of Three. The publisher Holt had been so enthusiastic about the book. They had done a larger print run than usual. Um, and I think they, uh, whenever, whenever a publisher gets behind a book, they obviously do more PR for that book. And so I think it got a bit of a leg up, um, and uh, the reviews were very positive. As you know, it, it was an American Library Association notable children's book for that year, which certainly means that it was well received by the reviewing public. So um, it, it, uh, it, yeah, I think it gave the series uh, a, a good start because it just picked up steam after that. The second book, The Black Cauldron, was the book that Lloyd called the easiest book he ever wrote, saying that it practically wrote itself. It received a 1966 Newbery Honor as a runner-up for the Newbery Medal, America's most prestigious children's book award. As Lloyd started to write the third and final book in the trilogy, he realized that he needed to revise his original plan for the series. A trilogy wouldn't be enough, and a fourth book was needed to tell the story. As uh, Lloyd was working on the third book, he just had the strong feeling that uh, he wasn't going to be able to conclude this in the third book. And so the fourth book began uh, to arise in his thinking, and eventually uh, he did move on to a fourth book, which was at that time titled uh, The High King of Prydain, I think. And, um, and so, as we know, he uh, worked on that fourth book even before the third book was completed. At this time, Lloyd was working at a day job at the Delaware Valley Industry Magazine as an associate editor. One day as he was working, he was wandering downtown Philadelphia during his lunch break and had what he would call a near-death experience. He um, stopped by a construction site, building a new big building in downtown Philadelphia, and he watched a wrecking ball on its chain swinging back and forth above him. And then went back to work. Then the very next day, as he looked at the newspaper, there was an article about a wrecking ball that had broken its chain and fallen to the sidewalk below. And as he looked closely, he discovered it was the same building that he was watching being constructed. And not only that, the spot where the wrecking ball hit was the exact spot where he had been standing the day before. And suddenly, his... Uh, lovable pessimism kicked in and he thought that could have been me. Now what you have to also understand about Lloyd is he had this great sense of responsibility to his readers and he realized that if he didn't finish Prydain, the Prydain series, nobody could step in and do it. Lloyd quickly wrote The High King of Prydain to end the series. He sent the manuscript to his editor, Ann Durrell, and as she read it, she felt like something was wrong with it, but couldn't determine what it was. On an August night in 1965, she awoke around 2 a.m. and realized what the problem was. An entire book was missing. He sent me the last one, and I said, Lloyd, there's a book missing, because the first chapter referred to 
Karen, having this adventure and year and so on. I said, hey, you didn't write that book yet. He said, oh. And then he went to work and wrote Karen Wanderer. The series was finished in 1968 when the fifth book was published. In 1969, the High King won the award that the Black Cauldron had narrowly missed three years earlier, ALA's John Newberry Medal, the award for the best children's book in America that year. He finished the High King and he himself says that it, it was almost like having a death in the family, that he felt such a sense of loss. Uh, and it began to depress him a bit. Plus, you know, he was going to have to face moving on to something else when he really wasn't quite ready to leave his magical kingdom. Um, and he began to feel like, well, maybe I'll never do any, anything good again, you know, and so on and so forth. And then the call comes uh, for the Newberry. I think that for Lloyd, winning the Newberry uh, helped him overcome that sense of depression he was having at finishing for Dane. Um, and as he said, in his own words, he said, um, it was certainly good for the morale, and it helped him move forward. The Chronicles of Perdain was one of America's first high fantasy series. In addition to the five books, Lloyd also wrote two picture books based on Perdain. And in 1973, he published a compilation of short stories about Perdain. In all, the series would be Alexander's most successful works, finding fans around the world. I had read the Chronicles of Prudane when I was in fifth grade, and they were my first experience with any kind of fantasy literature. I'm not talking about children's literature where you have Stuart Little or Chitty Chitty Bang Bang or Charlotte's Web or, or any of those books where you have talking animals. Lloyd's stuff sort of put you up on a higher level. It's almost like a, it's almost like the sort of pathway into the door of classic fantasy. And I read that when I was 10, 11, and loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. And it stayed with me, although I didn't reread it for years. I think another thing that's important to realize is that it was um, one of the most influential high fantasy series in American publishing history. I think it will remain being uh, extremely important in the realm of children's literature and literature in general for that reason. First of all, they're set out of time and they're, um, everything about them nevertheless is very real and very present. It's very human. These are great themes. And they're wonderful characters. And they're a lot of fun, too. I mean, they're not pompous. They're good, engaging stories. You could really give them to a kid. And I have, and I love them. I think of all of the books that I read as a child, and. I read a lot as a child. Um, Prydain plays a significant role in, in, you know, major points in my life um, and major points in my development and my um, my outlook for the future and and becoming who I am today. Kind of kind of pathway that it led me on was was really very much shaped um, by Prydain. I went home on a break and I found The Chronicles of Prydain, which I hadn't read since I was a child. And I just picked it up casually just to kind of look at, again, at the cover. And I opened up the book of three and I just started reading the pages and pretty soon I'd read the whole book. And then I went right to The Black Cauldron and read that one as well. And I had to go back to school before I'd had time to finish it. And so I went into the, their school library and I illegally checked out those books because you weren't supposed to check out children's books there unless you were a children's literature major, which I was not. And it made me realize that I could still love children's books. I could still learn from them. I could still get lost in them, even as an adult. And that opened a door for me in what I could write. 
With Prydain, Lloyd felt like he had finally found a way to express himself. He felt that he had now discovered how he could examine the human condition through his writing and how to really affect his readers' hearts and minds. Prydain was just such a revelation for children's books that there could be this long sustained um, multi-book uh, story that didn't take place in the world of the here and now and also wasn't a, a fairy tale per se but was an epic yet it was peopled with characters who were confronted with things and did things and acted on things that spoke of their humanity and were tremendously translatable to um, modern children. Those things that Taryn encountered were things that young people encounter every day. Unlike a, a lot of authors, I was not writing uh, for any specific child. I wasn't writing uh, for my daughter, for my uh, nephew, or somebody down the street. I was writing for myself uh, as, as a very expressive and profound art form. And this is how it turned out to be, that I found myself able to deal with things uh, that I could never even uh, express writing for adults. And this may seem quite surprising, uh, that you think a book for young people, uh, no, you can't deal with, uh, with serious things, uh, uh, far from it. Uh, I found I could deal with uh, much more serious, much more profound things uh, than I could ever do writing for grown-ups.